Hi, this is Dr. JP. This is the first in a three lecture series on William Shakespeare's The Tempest. This lecture is titled Page and Stage, and I encourage you to send me your questions, whether you're my student or not, on Instagram at HeyDrJP. I'm going to start with this image of the first folio. The first folio was a large, prestigious edition of Shakespeare's works that was put together in 1623 by Hemings and Condell. Hemings and Condell were players in Shakespeare's company, and they decided after his death in 1616 that his works should be put together and published in this nice edition. Right. A folio just has to do with the size of the paper. So there's a large sheet of paper. That paper folded in half is a folio. If you fold that paper again, it becomes a quarto. And if you fold it one more time, it becomes an octavo. And then there are 16 mos and 32 mos as well. Um, but we're dealing with just one fold of the paper, and that's a folio. If the, fo if the paper is unfolded, that's something called a broadside. You don't publish books that way. That's a poster, basically. Um, that's a really brief uh, material book history lesson for you. But this is why it's called the folio. The folio is important to our study of The Tempest because it's the first edition of The Tempest. The Tempest isn't published in Shakespeare's lifetime. It only comes out in 1623 in the folio edition. Now, this text is important to us, right? In our classroom, we're reading it in this beautiful yellow covered edition done by Barbara Mowat and Paul Worston. And the Folger Shakespeare Library has put this out. The Folger Shakespeare Library also puts the Folger Shakespeare online, and so you can see the um, the first you know eight lines or so of the play here on the web. This is the first scene of the play, and in this first scene, we get the titular tempest, the storm that comes into both the theater and the lives of the characters in the play. The first thing we see is that there is a tempestuous noise of thunder and lightning heard. And this whole scene takes place on a storm-tossed ship. One of the things I've asked my students to think about was, as they're reading Acts 1 and 2 of the play is how they might stage this scene. Staging is something that you might not think that we ought to be talking about in a literature class. You might think, oh, well, Dr. JP is going to be really way more concerned with the words on the page and what they mean. Um, but the, the thing is, is that, um, you know, the, the stage and here I've just got an image of Shakespeare's globe or what we think it was probably like. Um, the stage is also really important to our understanding of the text that's in front of us, especially since we're so far removed from the material conditions under which that text was read and performed in the first place. When people read Shakespeare, when people read drama at all, really, especially early modern drama, we tend to have this argument between page versus stage. Right? Um, sometimes literary scholars say, like, oh, the page, the page, that's the most important thing. Sometimes practitioners say, well, no, the stage, the stage is the most important, right? Now, both of these people have their points, but my thinking is, and the thinking of, I think, a lot, a lot of really wonderful scholars is that the actual tempest is somewhere in the middle, right? Page and stage have to work together for us to really understand, to really sort of think about what the Tempest is and what it does as a play, as a text on the stage, as well as on the page. To understand the text of the Tempest well, we need to understand some things about early modern theater. And so this is where I'm going to focus in this lecture. This map of London showing the playhouses comes from Joseph Quincy Adams' Shakespearean Playhouses that was first published in 1917. Okay, so the first theater I'm going to talk about here is the theater, the theater. The theater was built in 1576 by James Burbage, who's the father of Richard Burbage, who's a, who's a famous actor in Shakespeare's company. This is built in Shoreditch. You can see that label here, Shoreditch. And the theater was on leased land. Burbage got a lease for 21 years. This is going to become important in a few minutes. 
Just next door to the theater, you can see the curtain here. This was built in 1577, and it was a competitor. Both the curtain and the theater are between Finsbury Fields and um, on, on Shoreditch. Okay? Uh, so they're inside. Um, you know, they're, uh, they are near, anyway, London. They're on the same side of the river. Okay? Um, that's important. You can see in the, in the next image here that I'm going to bring up, that the rose built in 1587 um, was built on Bankside. The rose was the first theater that was built over here on Bankside across the River Thames. The rose was built in 1587 by Philip Henslow. This is a picture of what we think it looked like. Um, and Shakespeare's early plays were performed here. So Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, Titus Andronicus, these plays were performed in the rose. We know a lot about the rose because the site has been thoroughly excavated. And this, um, if you're interested in the rose or an early modern theater at all, I really recommend Roger Clegg's Reconstructing the Rose. I'll put the link below the video. Um, it's an interactive, really wonderful website that deals with both the archaeological finds as well as reconstructions, digital reconstructions. So here's the rose and the globe circled on our map of London showing the playhouses. The globe was built in 1598. I'm sorry. Um, the globe was built in 1598. And it was built, you know, right across the lane there from the rose. Uh, there, um, you know, it's that's just where it was located. Um, and so uh, the... The thing about the globe is that um, we have to go back and talk about the theater for a second. Remember I said that there was a 21-year lease on the theater. That lease was up in 1598. And so the story goes that the theater was dismantled and the timbers were carted through London to construct the globe. I mean, they didn't just go across you know, the river in a boat or whatever. They probably used... Uh, the bridge there, which is London Bridge, by the way, it's this the bridge we all sing about. Um, but uh, the the timbers, you know, and who who knows if this is true or not. But the story is that the that Burbage's theater was deconstructed um, and taken across town to build the Globe. Uh, so the the Globe was built in 1598. It burned down in 1613 um, during a production of Henry the Eighth. Uh, a cannon was shot and the thatched roof caught on fire. It was rebuilt later um, and then dismantled again in the 1640s. So this is what we think the globe looked like. Uh, the, the globe is um, a three-tiered structure. It's round, right? It's a globe. Um, it's got a thrust stage. It's got balconies. Um, it's got lots of places to sit. The pit is lower than ground level in the theater. Um, the groundlings would have stood in the pit. And so um, if you notice, there's a, there's a man right here, and, oh, sorry, right here in front of the stage, okay? Um, he's labeled J. And so this, this guy here is a average height, I would guess. And you can see that his head is just even with the stage. So he's looking up at the players, right? There are also people up in the balconies, right, um, that are looking down at the players. And then there, the, and, um, there's, it's also, you know, possible that um, there are some seats in the theater where it's not really possible to see the stage at all. Um, you would sit in these places if you were very well off, if you were royalty, if you were someone who wanted to be seen rather than to actually see the play. This circle here is the Blackfriars Theater. Now, uh, this is an indoor theater, and it's labeled first and second Blackfriars on the map. The first Blackfriars was um, established in 1596. Burbage, the same guy who built the theater, uh, fixed up the this um, this abbey. It's, that's why it's called the Blackfriars. 
um, to be a playhouse, but he wasn't able to open it because in 1596, the city of London banned playhouses within the city limits. And you can see that that's where the Blackfriars is. And so um, he was able to um, lease the Blackfriars to a children's company, the Children of the Chapel. This was a sanctioned theater company. They weren't uh, causing a lot of trouble. Um, in 1608, that lease changed hands and the King's Men played there. The King's Men is then at that point Shakespeare's company. Why is all of this important? Um, this is the, the inside of the Blackfriars, like what we think it might be like. Um, why is all of this important? Well, The Tempest was first performed in 1611. For the first recorded performance, anyway, is for King James. Um, and so in 1611, Shakespeare's company was performing at both the Globe and the Second Blackfriars. So there were indoor performances as well as outdoor performances. This means that our conceptions of staging might be quite different. In the Blackfriars Theater, you can see that there are, oops, you can see that there are um, people sitting on the stage itself. Um, there are rows of seats out here. Um, there are, there's seating here as well and up here at the top. Um, and so, uh, there are, there are lots of different vantage points for people to watch the play. Some of those vantage points are on the stage itself. It's really different. The other thing that's different is that, um, outside plays had to happen during the daytime, um, at the Blackfriars, they could happen anytime. They were lit by candlelight. Um, and so, um, there, there are different possibilities for staging and lighting and things like that. 